everybody. I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. Welcome back to Believe in Colts. I'd say this is Victory Monday, but technically it's Victory Tuesday because we're recording on a Tuesday. We were a little busy on New Year's, but I appreciate each and every one of you that hangs out and waited for this specific show because, oh my goodness. All right, the Indianapolis Colts now, wow. All right, they win when it mattered, and that was exactly what they had to do against a very hot Las Vegas Raiders team who just... Blew the doors off of the Chargers a couple games before that, and then beat the division, their division rivals, division leading Chiefs, uh, the week prior to our game. Whereas we just came off a big loss, um, you know, to the Falcons before coming into this. Donald, what was your reaction to this game? Just right off. Uh, just the response that the the Colts knew what was at stake, and so. You saw a different team out there um, than the previous week when they played Atlanta. So um, I was just happy to see that they came out focused and, and they had the, the right mindset. Oh, yeah, definitely. I feel that way as well. Before I get into the uh, nitty gritty of the game, I just got to remind everybody that Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, NFL, NBA, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember, use promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. So the score, if you just look at the stats and the score, it, it, it to me is utterly misleading. Okay, if you look at the the stats, the quarterback, Aiden O'Connell, had a heck of a day. You know, he had like 300 yards passing and a couple touchdowns. Devontae Adams had a big day with like 13 catches and 100 and some yards and a couple touchdowns and all of this. And their time of possession was way in their favor. And But really, if you watch the game, there was not a single point in this game where I felt like the Colts were out of control of this game. It felt like they were in control of this game from start to finish, from the point that it began all the way to the end. And um, I think that is more of a, a, a thing to kind of look at, in my opinion, than just looking at your box scores. Yeah, I mean, you <clears throat> excuse me, you can look at a box score all day, but if you had, if you had didn't watch the game, you don't know what the flavor is or was. Um, you know. When you look at the box score, there, you know, they they the Raiders made some 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 chunk plays. They made plays, they they moved the ball pretty consistently. Um, but what the Colts didn't allow them to do was get momentum. And I think that was key uh with a team like the Raiders who are playing off of momentum. They're playing off of turnovers, they're playing off of you know, getting ahead, um, and you know, just you know, the other team, <clears throat> excuse me shooting themselves in the foot. Um, the Colts really didn't do that this game, right? They had a couple couple mishaps here and there, but that's going to be in any game. That's human nature. But for the most part, they didn't allow the Raiders to just come in and be opportunistic and capitalize off of big-time mistakes, turnovers, you name it, penalties. Um, and so they did a good job on that on that front. They really did a good job of, of not allowing a team, like I said, like this is a team that, it's the NFL. It, anybody can win any week. Like, let's just be clear. Like, you know, um, the Panthers can mess around and beat somebody the last game of the season. It just might happen just because they got nothing to lose. But that's how the game goes, and that's how this league goes. And so when you can understand that that is a possibility of happening and you go in the game with the right mindset and you get all 53 guys to understand that and believe that and know that, you can kind of cut down on, the mishaps and so they did that and they deserved to win absolutely and one thing i want to make clear like we were three quarters through this game and the colts defense had only allowed three points through three quarters and then your boy ej oh, ran right into the punter yeah. oh my god gave them new life and they were able to get that 15 yards first down allowed them to go in make that score right and you're just like oh no what are you doing ej come on you can't if he if he makes the block 
that's not a penalty, right? And yeah. if he, yeah, and that's the that's the whole problem. He he was way too high. He went towards the, the from the knee to the groin area rather than knee to the foot area. That's where he was at uh, when he when when he got into there, um, and that that kind of gave them a little bit of momentum at that point. But oh, yeah. that that's that's a that's a that's a that's a that's a thing that the Colts you, you're used to seeing at least one of those plays every game by the Indianapolis Colts, whether it's offensively or defensively, where somebody makes a crucial mistake in the game, and it gives that other team a little bit of life, right? And 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 this is something that they have to clean this up right now. We got lucky. We had control of that game for the most part against the Raiders. But going into, you know, the Texans this upcoming week, and then, uh, you know, if we do win that game, the playoffs, you can't, you can't have plays like that that give momentum to the other team. Not a seven-point swing just right there, you know. Yeah, so one thing that I've learned in playing in the postseason is, the mistakes you make during the regular season cannot happen in the postseason or you will be home. You just don't have next week. You do not have time to recover. Um, that play could be the turning point of your season. And quite frankly, it could be end of some people's careers. Um, because they might not get they maybe might not get a chance to play in the league again. So it's that much important. It's 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 that much um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but it's just so important the magnitude of each play where you can't have bonehead mistakes. Um it's crucial. Now, this is a playoff game. This went from being just a regular division game to end the season to being a playoff game. And Absolutely. so the Colts are going to have to not have those those mistakes. They can't have turnovers, can't have sacks, can't have none of that stuff if they're going to win this game because this is another team that's riding high right now and they know what they're playing for and the stakes are high. So, But to stay on what just happened this past weekend, you know, the Colts really did – uh, a good job of cutting down on mistakes, but see what happens is you can't have them in crucial moments. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if, if I have a false start in the middle of the second quarter um, on a drive, <clears throat> excuse me, on first down, I would much rather have that than have it, you know, fourth and fourth quarter with, you know, three seconds left and we have to score a touchdown. I'm on the three, I'm on the two yard line and I fall start. I can't recover from that. Right. Like, that put us back five yards that, you know, that determined the whole game. We don't, we lose blah, blah, blah. So it just, it just, these things are going to happen. We just have to be able to cut down on them as much as possible. And so that right there, when EJ ran into him, like, you know, he's got good intentions. You know, he wants to make a play. You know, he wants to be a hero, but we got to be able to do it. If not, you can't make that mistake. Right. And so that happened that, that, that was for, to me, I was like, Oh crap. Cause I know how, you know, like, it's just like if someone misses a field goal or extra point in the second quarter and then they end up losing by one point. You see what I'm saying? Like it came back to bite you in the, you know, in the, in the end. So those kind of things that happen for the Colts, like they have to cut down on those. And I think EJ was trying to make up for some missed tackles, you know, throughout the course of the game. You know, I read some stuff that he didn't have the best game. You know, I didn't think he played terrible. I thought that he, one thing about EJ is EJ's young and EJ's aggressive. He wants to make plays, right? And so nobody's perfect, um, and he's he'll, he's going to keep getting better and learn from from his mistakes. So he'll replace faster. He'll take better angles. Uh, sometimes, like you know, why you love a player like EJ because it's all or nothing. And yeah, you hope, that you, you hope for the most part that it's more all than nothing, but you know that that all is going to be everything that he's got. So that's why, like when it, when that happened, I'm like, dang, because I've actually met him a couple times and we chopped it up. And um, so, like, when you know somebody, like, want to, like, see him on a personal level, like, you feel like you have a better connection with them. And so I know that, you know, he's not trying to go in there and mess up the game. He's trying to go in there and make a play. He's probably thinking in his head, like, man, I got to make up for something. I missed this type of movement. And then you get back there and it's like, <clears throat> you know, you just you continue to compile onto your game. So I I, I got to say something about the defense. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus a little bit on the secondary, which, quite frankly, with the guys we had out there, I was shocked at how good they played. All right. <laughs> I mean, we did not have a single starter from the beginning of the year playing in this game. Yeah. Not a single one. Because remember, we we had Daryl Baker Jr., Dallas Flowers, um, uh, and Kenny Moore at corners. Mm -hmm. And then our safeties was uh, Rodney Thomas, right, mm -hmm. and Blackman. 
Well, mm-hmm. Rodney Thomas was, you know, uh, inactive in this game. Blackman's on IR, uh, Flowers on IR, uh, Baker's hurt, and then, of course, Moore was hurt. So we had a bunch of mismatched guys. We had some rookies out there. We had some practice squad guys out there. And literally, okay, three and a half minutes left in this game. We're up 10 points, right? It's 13 to 23 with three and a half minutes left in the game. And I was thinking of you this whole time because I was like, this is this is where you go prevent. This is where you go prevent. You just right. kick it off. They're going to get the ball at the 25. This is the point. He didn't go prevent the entire to game. Right, Gus Bradley with this with this team. They they played zone, but they didn't play prevent like that soft ass cover. Yeah, right, right. Fans don't like. And yes, that allowed Aiden O'Connell and these receivers to just chunk 15, 20, 15, 20 yards and then get us a touchdown. But it took literally almost every second off the clock before they finally scored that touchdown. That's game, right? Even if they got the onside kick, they were out of field goal range. They would have got the ball at like the 50. Yeah. I mean, right, right. There no timeouts. The game was over, basically, at that point. And that was exactly the way Gus Bradley should have. And, and, and here's something else I want to say. Yes, Devontae Adams had a good game. Kind of. 13 catches, 21 targets, 61% completion percentage. If you tell me that my defense is going to hold – a, a youthful defense like that holds a stud like Devontae Adams to only 61% completion, you know, on, on targets. I'll take that. I'll take that. 61. Heck yeah. 70, 80. That's where he would normally want to be at, right? 61. That's pretty darn solid in my opinion. So, you know, right up to that point, I thought the the secondary did their job very, very well uh, against all these guys because I, I really think the Raiders have a very talented wide receiving core and Hunter Renfro and um, Jacoby Myers, the guy they got from um, New England mm-hmm. this past off season. And then of course, Devontae Adams. I, I, I thought this secondary played fantastic. Yeah. I mean, you know, just, you know, a few weeks ago it was, they want, you know, Gus Bradley's head on the state, mm-hmm. you know, out in, in front of 50, 56th street. Right. Like, but he, here's the deal. Like, that week, what people don't realize is like that week is filled with meetings. That week is filled with coaching. That week is filled with practices, with you, you know, building trust, building character, building confidence in your players. And so <clears throat> Gus and, and the whole defensive side of the ball, especially like this, the, the two defensive court uh, um, DB coaches, like I guarantee there's a lot of meetings with just them extra. Right. Maybe Gus popped his head in there, talked to these guys, you know, let them understand like, hey, Devontae is going to get 100 yards receiving. We have to limit that. It's the same way when I talked about a few weeks ago, I talked about um, um, Steph Curry. He's going to get his 30. He's going to get his 30, but let's like he's guaranteed a 30. Like, let's get if he can get we can get if he can drop 26. I did my job because now someone else has to play. Right. We looked at there was a huge fall off. It was like he had 120 something yards receiving. Next host person had like 50, right? So, like, there was like, okay, well, main focal point is Devontae. Everyone else we should be able to match up with and play ball with, right? So he's going to get his 100 and some yards. He just can't take over the game. We got to make other guys play. And I think they did a really good job of, uh, you know, elevating guys to step up, play well, just be confident. Like, you're here, you're on the field for a reason, and so it didn't matter about the defensive scheme. They understood the defensive scheme going into the game. They knew how to play it. They practiced it for three days, right? It was the fact of, hey, like, we believe in you. This is why we're putting you guys out there. And then it comes down to the players uh, amongst themselves in that in that DB room to trust and believe in each other and be and just be, you know, a, a part, a rock for each other. And so I thought those young guys did a really good job of that. Um, and I think the coaching staff also did a really good job of, you know, making sure that those guys understood exactly, um, you know what I'm saying, what what was at stake. So I was happy with their performance. Now, will it be every single week that we can go out there with that same crew and expect that kind of performance? I'm not going to say no, but it will be 
it'll be tough, right? It'll be tough. Like you get magical moments from 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 players from time to time, but it, how how consistent can they be? How fast can they grow up? How you know how well can they play in a game like this upcoming week that's so crucial? Excuse me, with such young guys out there with inexperience. Absolutely, and you know I'm gonna move over to the offense because uh, we're well past halfway through this episode. We ain't said a thing about the offense yet. Look, Gardner Minshew played a pretty solid game. Another game over 110 quarter uh, passer rating. That's that's pretty solid. You want to see something like that. But here's here's the thing, okay? And I want to mention this. In the past five games, Gardner Minshew has seven touchdowns to two interceptions. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's that's what you want to see from a guy walking into the play, uh, walking at the end of the end of the season with with playoff aspirations right you want to see a guy who has seven touchdowns to two interceptions uh, you know in in, in, a, in a span of some games like that and i really think that gardner has done a very good job in the, in the second half of the year of limiting his turnovers and putting the ball in places that where the receivers can make plays now does he still have questionable I don't see that nearly as much I don't see those WTF plays from Gardner Minshew that I I was seeing at the beginning of the year where you're like why are you stopping and looking behind you before you throw the football or take off and run with it you know or or why are you throwing it into triple coverage you know I, I don't understand this and and we're not seeing that and I think a lot of that has to do with him starting to trust the guys around him finally right new team around him has taken him into the entire year He's trusting his offensive line. He's trusting his receivers. And, you know, it's it's just – it's it's allowing Gardner to play the game that he needs to play, mm-hmm. not what he feels like he has to play, but what he needs to play in order to win. Yeah, I mean, think about it. You sign a deal in the offseason <clears throat> to come to Indianapolis to be the backup quarterback. They draft a quarterback with the what fourth overall pick. So you know you're not the guy because they're going to tell you clearly why you're here at this point, you know. And so you go into the season to be a mentor, to possibly be there, to be there, <clears throat> excuse me, in an emergency, you know, um, service to provide emergency service. And you're thrusted into starter for the rest of the season and, you know, before the first quarter of the season is even over with. And so, you know, you can try to get as many reps as you can live, you know, in the preseason, but that's the preseason um, practice, <clears throat> excuse me, training camp. I'm all, <clears throat> excuse me, God, I can't even talk today. Um, you know, training camp is another thing. It just takes live bullets. It takes you to be really out there for real to get comfortable. And then you had some offensive line uh, injuries early on, so you didn't have mm-hmm. the regular starters in there. Um, the receiving core was, pre- you know, they've been pretty much, you know, together all intact all year. You know, you're missing, you're starting, you know, running back, you know, it just was a lot. It was a lot, man. And then he was, he was trying to overperform and, and not play his game. It just, it just, it just, it just took time. And luckily um, he started to, he's starting to settle down. Like, listen, no one, I, like, and I, I have to get this out, right? Nobody ever said that Gardner Minshew was trash. Like I've never said that's never come out of my mouth ever. I've never heard people. He just wasn't the starter long term as a franchise guy for the other teams he played for. But yeah. when he played, there's a reason why they said Minshew Mania because he came and no one knew who this kid who this kid was, and all of a sudden now he's got the stash and the dirty Sanchez and people are rocking that and you know going crazy down down in Jacksonville and blah blah blah. So he can play football. He's just got to play his football right. Like he's better than. A lot of quarterbacks out there, period. Now, is he top five? No. In the league? No. But I mean, he's making a fair, a fair, a fair case for being in the top 15, the top 20 quarterback. He's he's there. He's, you know what I'm saying? He played that well this year to where Anthony comes back next year. We get that. But Gardner, if he's I don't even know how, how long of his deal is, but if the Colts don't lock him up, he's gonna go somewhere else and be a starter. So, you know, this guy, man, this is all this is all you know, adding to his resume. You know, for this this game here, he's got to show up and keep continue to play well and just continue to make good decisions. And you get in the playoffs, you got to do the same thing. But 
you know, for him to come out and play as well as he has these past few weeks and go seven, seven and two for touchdown to interception uh, ratio. I mean, that's pretty damn good in my opinion. I think Colts fans can be happy with that. Right. So regardless of, the, of, of what the record reflects, regardless of, you know, where you think the coach should be at right now, you know, at the end of the day, the quarterback's the leader of your team. You know, we only go as far as really he can take us. Um, you know, there's everybody else that's just as important. But when you have to pinpoint, like, look at the team, who's their quarterback? Look at the team, who's their quarterback? It's, it comes down to that, right? So mm-hmm. he's going to have to just continue to play Gardner Ministry football for the next couple, for this next week. So hopefully there's another week after that. Really? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, that's what we're all hoping for, right? right. Um, another thing that I, I, I like what I've been seeing from Gardner is he, when it's there, he does take those deep shots, you know, uh, which we weren't seeing earlier in the season. We weren't seeing him stretch the field and make the defense play the whole field rather than just, you know, the first 15 yards uh, from the line of scrimmage. So um, occasionally you'll see him see – a guy downfield like Alec Pierce and hit him for a 50 pluser, you know, and it's nice to see that something that has really been beneficial last, you know, the, the previous game, this offensive line gave up six sacks to the Atlanta Falcons. We gave up one sack and Max Crosby didn't have any sacks and only one quarterback hit, right? Because we got our starting right tackle back, and he wasn't 100%. He was beat up this game, beat up. Uh, apparently, after the game, on the way into the tunnel, get back to the locker room, he had to stop and lean up against the walls because he, he was in so much pain, you mm-hmm. know, after the game. Uh, so he wasn't fully back yet, but you could still, even with him not at 100% and, and, and fighting through pain, you could see the difference uh, between Braden Smith – and Blake Freeland when it comes to pass protection. It's just amazing. And, you know, hats off to Braden Smith for gutting it out, going out there and showing the toughness that he has and putting it all out on the field for the team. And same with the rest of the offensive line because they showed up today or they showed up in that game and they did an absolutely fantastic job, not only keeping Minshew clean for the most part, but actually opening up some run uh, holes in the run game uh, for – Trey Sermon and Jonathan Taylor to carry the rock. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, when you look at it, this is the game that the, this is the performance they had to to have. And so, you know, when I texted you a few weeks ago, like, what are they doing with their sets and their hands and all that kind of stuff? You see, there's the, there's there's a huge drop off when you have, especially from offensive line play. And I, I can speak on this because I know, right? Um, when you go from starter to second team. It's not even close. Like the the, the drop off is there. The drop off is so substantial. Like uh, when you look at it from a standpoint of like whoever is on that's not starting that made the team on uh, on, on the offensive line, they can play multiple positions. Mm-hmm. And so that means that they're not good enough to be a starter at one. Right. So if you're not going to be a starter at one, you just have to be serviceable at the other positions that, that you can fill in for. And so that, that just shows you how much of a drop-off is about to happen when a guy goes in that, okay, yeah, he's not going to be the starter, but also he can play like guard and center, or he can play like both tackle spots, right? And he's serviceable, like uh, he's going to give up a sack or he's going to get pressure. He just doesn't run He just doesn't run block that well as, as our starter. But at the end of the day, he still is able to, you know, um, uh, play. So when you look at it from a standpoint of, um, just having him back and what that did and how it impacted the game and kept, you know, Gardner uh, healthy and upright is, is, is humongous. And I feel him, man. Like, I feel him. Like, I know, like, I know how hard it is to gut something out like that. The amount of pain that you go through that people don't even know about, they don't realize, um, you know, this late in the season, like you, your body's been through six or seven major car accidents when you compile all the hits and all that force. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's just incredible. So for him to get out there and gut that thing out and keep him clean against one of the better pass rushers in the league that has great get off in the motor, 
You got to put, you got to take your hat off to him. And I think he knew he had to come back for this game. Like I think, but he knew he wasn't a hundred. He knew he was going to be hurt. He knew that, that this is, this is the stuff. This is, these are the storylines that people don't know about. These mm-hmm. are the, like, this is the stuff that goes on during the week of guys really be hurting, like for real, like really be messed up. And just to get out there and gut it out on a Sunday for a performance, for a win, you know, it's, it's major. And so what he did this week, that's all to him. I'm glad you said something about it. I wasn't going to bring it up, but, you know, you got to respect it at the end of the day because, you know, it's it's uh, it's taxing on the body for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm – look, uh, I don't know. The one thing that I hope doesn't happen is that this negatively affects his progress and getting healthier as the time goes on. You know, because obviously the next game is just as big as the last game, right? Uh, yeah. This game here, it's win and in, you know, and I'd like to see him be able to play. But at the same time, you know, we need him We need him as healthy as he possibly can so he can play at his best. Uh, but, again, if you don't win, your season's over, so it won't matter. So I, so I understand he's, where he's coming from. So he's going to be 100% of, of his 70% that he is. Yeah. Right. Like that's what it's going to have to be because this is uh this is a one week elimination uh, playoff, you know, st- uh, race that we're in. And so, shoot, if I'm not 100 percent, I can give you this much. And if this is going to get us in the playoffs, then let's tape it back up and let's get back out to the following week. Hey, I got the rest of the offseason to, to, to get better. And, you know, that's the that's the mindset, especially as an offensive lineman. Like you got to drag us off the field. Like if we're not playing. It's because we're we're really we're injured. We're not hurt. We're injured. Yeah. And so like, there his mindset is like, like, you know, I didn't see guys freaking hell. I tore my bicep and stayed in the game. Like, you know, what I'm saying, like, I ain't coming out. I tore my Liz Frank ligament and stayed and finished out the game. It happened right before halftime in uh, my rookie year. You know, what I'm saying, like, you really have to like, you really like, you see guys with braces on their arms and and, and all this neck stuff and all that kind of stuff because it's like. The average person is packing it up, but we're like, "Hey, give me, give me that shot. Let me rest during the week. Let me see if I can practice." But guarantee you, on Sunday, I'm, I'm going, I'm going. I'm, and, and it's still going to hurt, but I'm still going to put it out there for my team. And so, like stuff like that, man. When you see guys play through, play through injuries and, and, and pain and all that, like, it, it, like I, I salute it because I just know how hard that is to, to do. So. You know, hats off to him, man. I, I know Gardner's thankful. I know everyone in that organization is thankful for having him back for this game. And I can guarantee you this, like, if he didn't get a game ball, if he didn't get some type of, you know, shout out uh, in the team meeting because of it, like, this game could have been a lot different because I was expecting Crosby to have the wreck habit, right? Yeah. Like, like he's been doing. I mean, he's, he's, he's good for a sack and he's good for some QB pressures and hits and hurries. So mm-hmm. – to not have any of that kind of stuff, you know, transpire on, you know, at, on Sunday was humongous. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely was. And I think that's going to do it for our review of the game, though. Uh, those of you who watch, watch this on YouTube, please don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe. If you're not subscribed, and tag your notification bell so that you're notified next time we go live. And if you're listening to this on a, um, you know, audio podcast, please leave a review. It helps out a ton. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen. Uh, that's Donald Thomas. This was Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. And as usual, go Colts. Go Colts, baby. Do you believe? 